In this video, we will look at some methods for fault finding on socket ring circuits. We will talk about three common fault types. Socket and switch faults, broken cable and conductors, what we call continuity faults, and short circuits giving rise to insulation resistance faults. First of all, let's be clear on what a basic socket ring circuit is for this video. This is the basic ring circuit. We have only shown single sockets here and of course any of these points could be double sockets or even junction boxes. A domestic ring circuit is normally wired in 2.5mm twin and earth cable and protected by a 32 amp circuit breaker. To start with we will check that the sockets are all functioning as they should. These are live tests and we will be keeping the socket covers on for the testing. We need to establish the state of things before we start dismantling and checking the sockets can tell us a lot about the circuit. So let's begin. We will test each socket or point for correct polarity between live and neutral and to check that there is an earth connection to the front of the socket and that any switches actually work that they do turn the phase voltage on and off. A standard BS1363 socket will always have the pinouts as shown. Viewed from the front, from the user's side of the socket, the live or phase is always on the right. Begin with checking the voltages at each socket. I prefer to use my test meter and a breakout plug as shown in a later slide. Some electricians will use a good quality plug top tester with LED indication for the health of each socket. A healthy socket, one that is wired correctly and switched on, will give the voltages as shown in the upper left table marked correct. Live to neutral and live to earth will give 230 volts nominal. Because neutral and earth are the same point electrically back at the substation, this will give a reading of around 0 volts. A reverse wired switch where neutral and live have been crossed over will give the results shown. Neutral is now live with 230 volts on it. The customer won't know, all the household equipment will still function. And if the switch, if there is one, is turned to off, then there should be no voltage output. This slide shows what we would see if one of the conductors was not connected to the socket. First shown is no live or phase. Then no neutral. And now no earth. We've also shown the correct table again for comparison. You can use either a test meter with a breakout plug to check the voltages or a decent socket tester. Whichever you choose, know your equipment. Let's move on and do some continuity testing now and begin with what a healthy circuit should look like. These will be dead tests with the covers off and we must therefore carry out safe isolation and lock off for our own safety before starting the testing. After safe isolation, start by removing the two ring circuit cables from the MCB, the neutral block and the earth block. We've called them here cable A and cable B. Some electricians call them number one and number two. It doesn't matter so long as they are identified. Separate the individual conductors so that all six are in free air. Select the correct low ohms range on your meter, check that the meter is working correctly and then begin testing. The table here shows the sequence and some possible results for a good circuit. Test end to end between the brown of cable A and the brown of cable B. 0 0.4 ohms may be a typical reading, it depends on the actual length. You should get a similar reading when testing end to end between the two blues. They are the same size cable and they travel the same route as the brown. The earth cable is smaller in size and you should expect a higher reading when tested end to end. For 2.5mm twin in earth, this will be about 1.6 times bigger than the brown to brown reading. We are looking for balance between the conductors. Brown and blue should be about the same and the earth slightly higher. Now that we are happy with the healthy circuit, 
let's look at a faulty circuit and see how we can trace the fault accurately and easily. Remember your safe isolation? These are dead tests. The circuit should not be live. If the circuit is still switched on, you will be the first to find out. Test end to end between the two browns, then the two blues and finally the two earths. I find it helps to write down my results as I test. Look at our table here. Brown to brown and earth to earth are both OK. But blue to blue, the neutral, has a high reading, the meter maximum. This indicates a problem with the neutral cable. It is open circuit. There is a break in continuity somewhere. So let's find the break and repair it. Start by sketching the sockets and numbering them 1 to 8 in this case. This helps you to keep track of what you've tested and what the results were. If you write it down, you don't need to remember it. We're going to do what's called divide by two testing. We will keep chopping the circuit in half until we find the problem. It is an established and proven method of getting to the fault quickly and easily. So begin by removing socket number five. We now have two legs, socket five to cable A and socket five to cable B. The fault has to be in one of these two legs. Now, at the consumer unit, link all the cable A conductors together, brown, blue and earth. Then do the same with cable B. Why do we do this? When testing, it saves a lot of time. Without these links, we would have to keep returning to the consumer unit and making new connections. The top circuit here is healthy, no problems. If we test between any two cables, the test voltage can travel to the connector block and back, giving a low ohms reading. But the lower circuit is faulty. This time, only a test between live and earth will return low ohms. Any test that includes neutral will give a high ohms reading, a fail, because of the break in the neutral. So, let's test the ring circuit then. At socket 5, Test between each pair of conductors that go back to cable A. Live to neutral, live to earth and neutral to earth. As you can see, they are all low ohms. We can assume therefore that the fault is not between socket 5 and cable A in the consumer unit. And that is half the circuit eliminated straight away. Now test pairs of cables between socket 5 and cable B in the consumer unit. Live to neutral, live to earth, and then neutral to earth. As you can see on this little chart, any test that includes neutral gives a high ohms or open circuit reading. The fault is between socket 5 and cable B in the consumer unit. And we're on our way to finding the problem. Now, split the circuit in half again, this time at socket number 7. Link the conductors at socket 5, as shown, and now test the conductors in pairs between socket 7 and cable B, and then between socket 7 and socket 5. The two mini charts show our example results. 7 to cable B appears OK, but 7 to 5 has high values again. The fault must be between socket 7 and socket 5. We're closing in on the problem. Last little bit. Remove socket number 6 and place a link at socket number 7. Now test 6 to 7, which appears OK on our chart, and then test 6 to 5 and the problem is still there. Any test along the neutral conductor returns a high ohms or open circuit reading. The damaged cable must be between socket 5 and socket 6. How easy was that? If we follow a logical method, we will find the fault. All that's left to do now is to repair or replace the damaged cable, remove all the links, reinstate all the sockets, and to test end-to-end -end again at the consumer unit. All being well, we will have good readings this time. Carry out insulation resistance tests, etc. And finally, reconnect into the circuit breaker. Complete your live testing, and that's it. Job done. Now we can look at insulation resistance faults. You must make sure that the circuit is safely isolated and locked off because these are all dead tests. First, 
we will need to remove and separate cable A and cable B at the consumer unit. Be sure to remove all connected devices and temporarily remove or exchange any USB sockets with ordinary sockets and then carry out an insulation resistance test as normal. We want no links in these tests. We are testing that each conductor is separate from the others. We should test life to earth, life to neutral and neutral to earth. I normally start at 250 volts test voltage just to make sure that nothing has been left in circuit. Sort any connected equipment issues that appear and when a 250 volt test passes turn the test voltage up to 500 volts. So here we are with our faulty circuit. Let's imagine we have done the tests and these were our results on the twin and earth cable. It appears that we have a short or some problem between the live or phase conductor and the earth. We want high ohms readings, for example 299 mega ohms to indicate a pass and live to earth in our example here is only giving us zero ohms. But where is the fault? Begin by sketching out the sockets and then numbering each one on your sketch. Now we can carry out our divide by two fault finding and begin by removing socket number five. Test from socket five back to cable A in the consumer unit. Live to neutral, live to earth and neutral to earth and write down the results. There is no need for any links. In fact, we do not want links. We want all the conductors to be separate. Now, IR test from socket five back to cable B in the consumer unit and record the results. For us, five to cable A or passes. So the problem is not in that leg. From five to cable B shows a fail between live and earth. So the fault is in this half. Divide the circuit again. This time remove socket number seven. Test from seven to cable B and all passes. Test from seven to five. Live to earth fails again. That just leaves socket number six to remove and test. A test from six to seven passes but a test from six to five fails again. This means that the fault must be in the cable between socket five and socket six. And sure enough, when we investigate further, there is the nail in the cable that's causing the problem. All we need to do now is to remove or repair the damaged cable and make the circuit whole again and prepare it for testing one last time. It is always a good idea to do end-to-end -end continuity tests first and then follow this with the insulation resistance test. Complete the testing, complete any certification and hand back to the customer. And there we are. We hope that you found this video useful and that you have learnt a little more. Never assume there is a fault. Always carry out normal testing first to establish what type of fault, if any, exists. Continuity tests should always be carried out before insulation resistance tests. Tests should be repeated after any repairs or replacements and work methodically and keep notes of your testing results. Always carry out safe isolation and lock off before dead testing. Thank you for watching this video. It's very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. Here are some tips on getting even more information and help out of learnelectrics.com. At your web browser, enter learnelectrics.com into the search bar. Select learnelectrics.com from the choices offered and the website, as shown, will open up for you. You now have a couple of choices. You can search for a help item or any video by entering a keyword into the search bar on the right. Click on return and all the help files and videos with that word in the title will be listed for you. They will be shown with a short description. Click on continue reading for more information. Each video listed will have a link shown that will take you directly to that exact YouTube video. Or you can browse through a list of all the available items and videos. To do this, click on the LE logo 
on the top left of the home page and all of our items and videos will be shown. There will be 10 items shown on each page and at the bottom of each page is a page selector, page 2, page 3, page 4, etc. that will bring up the next 10 items or videos in the list. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, don't miss the next one. And once again, thanks for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.